Oh, bless you. Looks like he done caught a cold. Welcome to another episode of NSB Custom Cars. I think it's going to be nitrous time. So now that we uh, got the Pontiac pretty much finished up, we got all these cars washed up, trucks and everything. I brought the uh, Super B in because I got a couple things I'm wanting to do to it. For one, underneath the hood, it's been getting quite nasty. I got a lot of dirt and some dust and some things that need to be cleaned up, so I'm gonna clean this up. Two, I bought a, uh, another O2 sensor. Uh, when I start this up, I'm getting a lot of smoke and gas smell. And I just don't think something's reading right, so I'm going to start with the O2 sensor. And three, got a nitrous kit we're going to put on, made by a Nitrous Express. So we're going to kind of wake this car up a little bit and see what happens. So let's get to work. So this is our uh, little steam cleaner made by McCullough. Pretty much the same people make the chainsaw, I believe. It's spelled the same way. And that's what I'm gonna clean underneath here with. You can see like all the way down through there how dirty it is on the rail. Also, I'm gonna try out something my wife got me. Some uh, lights that goes on your hand and as you can see, We'll try them out. It's pretty much the way the steam cleaner works. Fill it up. You got this little handle here. And you got these brushes you're going to earn, which right now I got kind of a big brush. They've got uh, smaller brushes. They got some with uh, Scotch Bright around here. They go up to a big pad where you can do a floor. It's got a long full stick. I'll show you here after a while. But pretty much. We'll take the uh, the nozzle and you got the trigger here. And you see how it kind of spits out steam. And you don't want to sit there and burn it, but. Kind of do a spot. Then come back with your rag and wipe up all the dirt and everything that took loose. I need to get right in there. Kind of like these lights, they, they do light up quite a bit down here. I can see what I'm doing. You know, getting in behind all these cables, that steam just blows in behind all that, makes that really come loose. It makes this clean up really nice. That looks a lot better. Got all that dirt out of there. So I kind of like my little gloves. I mean, they don't come in the way. You're cleaning and they're shining light on what you do. They work out pretty good. So uh, I recommend them. So now we're gonna raise this car up and uh, put the O2 sensor on. That'd be our next step. Now that I got everything pretty much cleaned up up here for now, clean enough. So let's get a car in the air. I don't think y'all have ever actually seen underneath of my Super B. This has been 10 years ago that I've done all this, but, but I keep it pretty clean. I 
rear end's a little dirty. I think I'll do a little cleaning on that. As you can see, it's got a fuel cell in the trunk. Got a little bit of dirt back here. So right there's our O2 sensor. We need to get that out and put a new one in. So she come loose. Now all I gotta do is cut a zip tie here and unplug it. She's quite nasty looking. All the holes ain't clogged up in it that I can see. But. So here's the new one. And as you can tell, they do have some uh well they got anti-seize on here already, so you don't have to put that on. We need to get it put back in up here. All right. Of course, a zip tie gun, everybody ought to have one. And there we have it. O2 sensor in. So now I got the O2 sensor in, I cleaned up the engine bay. So my next step is I'm gonna start on my nitrous here a little bit. One thing that I was kind of worried about on this is the line is not very long. This is a pretty long car. So while I got it up in the air, I think I'm gonna just run this line underneath where it's gonna be going see how much I got on each end to see if it's actually going to be long enough. I believe we're going to be long enough. I just got to figure out how I'm going to run this. I've got the nitrous pretty, uh, pretty much complete. It's all wired up. Uh, I haven't tested it or anything other than I did test my purge valve. So before I do anything on testing, I still got to set my EF or my uh, fast box into the handheld. I got to go through and tell it that it's got nitrous now. Uh, next step is right now in the car, I've got this really tall gear that I use just for driving around, save some gas. It's really too tall for this car. So I'm gonna put my 355 gear back in it, but uh, I have to change uh, two gears around because uh, my 355 is on a locker and I wanna take it off and I wanna put it on a limited slip, which I have a 411 on. So I'm gonna swap the 411 and the 355 gears with the locker and the limited slip. So I'll have the 355 limited slip in this one. So let me uh, get started on this rear end. So we got this gear out. It's a uh, 294. It does have a positive traction. This is the cone type. So I put the when I put this one together, 
the cone one's not the one that everybody wants. They want the clutch type, which I do have that one. So for the, the gear that's just a highway gear, I'm not going to do much. If I still want my pause unit, I put the cone one on the tall gear. And once again, it's a 294. That's a pretty tall gear. So let's go to the archives. This one stays together. I don't do nothing with it. All I got to do is pop it in, pop it out. It's ready to go at any time. At one time, when I took this from the older end, it was the gear was, had a bad bearing in it. You can see where it was rubbing on it. That's the reason I took this unit out of a, a bad gear setup. But let's go and uh, look in the archives and see what rear ends we're gonna put together here. Something I need to be sanding on. That's my 355. Yeah, once again, this is my 355 gear. And it's on a locker. It's a good gear. I just don't like the way the locker is working. It used to work really nice. And it's started not lock, unlocking on one axle. And I can't find nothing wrong. I've done had it apart three or four times. But. At the drag strip, I don't care if it breaks loose or not, so I'm going to put the uh, 411 on it and take this gear and put on my other one. But that's, uh, that's the 411 zone. No, that's heavy. So first thing, let's get them over there. Here's the two difference between the two carriers. This is the clutch type, which I'm putting the 355 on. And this is the Detroit locker. You can see how it's got bolts holding this all together. In here, it's got these teeth that open and close. These just have clutches that slip when you get to a turn. For the most time, if you're going straight, they both grab. He's got brand new clutches. I just rebuilt all this and put the 411 on it. And it started singing, so something moved on me. And what I'm looking at, I think it needs to uh, have some more shims on it and bring it up some, but that's where I'm at. Well, I got my nitrous on. I got a full bottle and got that last weekend when I got it all put on. It was raining. This weekend come and it's completely rainy. So I really couldn't test it out. The bad problem is in doing all this, you know, I changed my rear gear and I also put a new O2 sensor on there because I've been running really rich and it's not been reading right. So I thought the O2 sensor was bad, so I put a new O2 sensor on it. Unfortunately, it's still running very rich, and it's not hitting its target. And on this fast system, you know, this is the easy EFI, it's supposed to learn. So as you drive it, there's a little green light on the box comes on and says it's learning. At this point, that little green light's still not coming on, so it's not learning. So when it doesn't learn like that, there's something going on this has a built-in 
safe mode. It's called a limp mode, just like on your new cars and stuff. So this thing is stuck in limp mode. It has a spot where you can go to see if it throws any codes, and it's not giving me any codes. So I don't know what's going on with it, why it's not learning. So at this point, I'm going to have to call fast and see what they say, what to look for, what's going on. I went through the book, I went through everything, troubleshooting, everything. Everything's running right. Even the green light's coming on for the O2 sensor, so I know the O2 sensor's working. For some reason, it's not learning. Uh, the last time this happened has been several years ago. He said my batteries were, the voltage were too low. And when you start up, if the voltage don't stay at a certain height, it's going to go into limp mode. Uh, I got two new, well, they're not really new batteries, but since you know I put new batteries in it, they're up there at 12.5. I mean, I got good voltage on it, so I don't know if there's still something there going on. I'm really thinking about sending the box back to them, the, 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 uh, the brain here, and send it back to them and let them reprogram it and get rid of the, the self-learning to where I can toggle in my laptop and where I do it, that's where it's going to be. So that might be what's going to go down. But uh, until then, uh, this weekend's over. We got, it's still been raining. I, got, I don't know if you can hear it, starting to rain right now. Storm's coming through. So it'll be probably two or three weeks before I even get the chance to try the damn nitrous out on it. But uh, plus I got other things I need to be working on other than my old car anyway. I still got the yellow car we got to get back in here and get back on it and get it finished. It's just been sitting out here. The Pontiac took up half a year almost with all the problems it had. But uh, we got everything done on it as far as I can go at this point. Uh, I guess, I don't know what other videos we're going to be putting out, what's going down in the next couple of weeks. We do plan on taking the dart to the drag strip. That's just going to depend on the weather. So after we did all the work on it, putting the crank trigger and trying to get all them problems solved. So uh, I guess that's going to be all on this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We need all the subscribers we need. And uh, until next time.